Okay, here we go. Uh, as always, I don't really know uh, if the stream is going to be okay because, um, as always, YouTube says that my stream status is bad, but uh, hopefully it's not like that. I mean, many other times it was not like that. And uh, so I don't really know, but I hope that is okay. And uh, okay, let me pop out the chat. And uh, oh, I already see many messages here. Okay, <laughs> I hope that everything is okay anyway. And okay, I see Corniv. Okay, hello Corniv, how are you? And Mudasar is here. Hi, hi Brahima, how are you? Matthew is also here, and Lindsay is also here. Okay, great. Uh, and uh, I think that I have a kind of button uh, around here to check all the participants, but uh, it's not the, the time to do that. And uh, honestly, I, I see you in the chat, so it's okay for me. And uh, okay, uh, let me switch to um, trading view and let me check in my setting for for this program here that's the software that I use for the live streaming if everything is okay so I have trading view the meta trader for okay I have everything here and uh, okay what are we going to talk about today I'm going to explain all the things that I'm going to cover today while we wait for all the other traders to come okay today I'm going to talk about uh, non-farm payrolls but I don't really want to dedicate a lot of time to it because I also have a video in my YouTube channel about it. So we talked uh, I think about non-farm payrolls uh, last month or probably September, I don't really remember but I already have a video about it and uh, just wanted to share one of my strategies with the non-farm payrolls and also my point of view about trading the uh, non-farm payrolls that uh, is a fundamental news is a fundamental data that uh, is released uh, every first friday uh, of the month so we have this data once a month okay um uh, Ibrahima is here again, probably with another nickname, and says hello again. Okay, hello again to you. And uh, after that, after the non-farm payroll uh, analysis, we are going to talk in details about forex market analysis. What I want to try to do today is to analyze some currency pairs. So if you have any requests, start to uh, write this request uh, in, in the chat and I'm going to analyze whatever currency pair you prefer and whatever currency, uh, whatever time frame you prefer. So. If you have any requests, just type it in the chat. But what I want to do is to have a look at some currency pairs and have a deep analysis on it. So evaluate the trend with the swing trading strategy. Then also evaluate the market with the new Ichimoku system. If you uh, didn't have the chance to go through the course or to enroll in the course, we will just analyze the market with some main uh, components of the Ichimoku but together with other strategies so don't worry if you don't know about swing trading or Ichimoku trading or even candlestick patterns because I'm also going to talk about candlesticks I want to uh, I want to show how I think uh, when I, I'm opening a new trade or I'm considering uh, uh, to open a new trade with my main account because last time someone asked me, well not just last time, many times in the live streaming traders uh, asked me, so with your main account so you told us that you trade mainly with the swing trading technique analyzing also the candlesticks but you also sometimes use other indicators for example the Ichimoku or uh, sometimes I think that uh, I have mentioned uh, the parabolic SAR uh, or um, 
I think even other indicators, sometimes in a range I mentioned the stochastic oscillator. So uh, I also have a look according to the situation to other indicators or other uh, fundamental uh, components of the market. So what I want to do today is a deep analysis trying to use all the weapons that we have on the market. Because it may sound a bit confusing trading with the swing trading technique, with the Ichimoku, parabolic SAR. Uh, and chart, chart patterns, candlesticks, but it really makes sense in my opinion and we are going to see why and how. So we have the first request, the pound against New Zealand dollar. This is one of my favorite currency pairs because I was analyzing this. This week um, we see here, okay, hourly chart, okay, very good. And uh, okay, so we have the first request, but as I said before, I'm not uh, really jumping into it. Uh, I want to have like uh, five, five minutes, 10 minutes to talk about non-farm payrolls. So I was uh, uh, trading uh, Euro dollar today. So let me check Euro dollar. Okay. Actually, I have to be honest uh, before, uh, before uh, the live streaming, before the live trading session, I was considering opening a trade on Euro dollar even right now. So <laughs> even like four hours before uh, the, um, before the market closes. So I was considering uh, another another opportunity on the market and we are going to talk about it in five minutes but uh, uh, let me check the, um, the 15 minutes chart that I think it is better for uh, this uh, currency pair regarding uh, the non-farm payrolls so we had the non -fam well even without checking the time I think that this is the candle uh, so 1230 yeah this is the candle okay so let me highlight that and uh, okay, uh, like this one. Okay, well, not not really a nice color. I don't really like this color. Uh, let me see if I can change it. Like uh, I don't know, a green. Oh, this is just the board. Okay, okay. So this is the candle of the non farm payrolls and. Um, what I was uh, what I was suggesting today, even in the Facebook group, is that obviously uh, I I wanted to trade with a long position because I was already considering a long position for the short term trend that clearly uh, this week was up. But uh, with the non farm payrolls, I was waiting for uh, an opportunity because sometimes we have the price moving very very fast up and down, forming uh, a a very good uh, um, a lower shadow and a very good upper shadow and this is the time for me when I'm not really sure about the price to get it is the time for me to wait for a very big movement and then catch the trade with a very good price so here I was waiting for the non farm payrolls to try to catch euro dollar with a very convenient price and when the price started to go down crossing the the green moving average here i was considering about getting my long position on the market here and then at the end i had my long position at one point i, I think that was 1.1415 so let me have an horizontal line so it will be clearer okay here and I had my long position that didn't really go very well, but uh, I, I closed it uh, more or less at the entry point because what I was expecting after the price reaching this point was the price continue to go higher and uh, I didn't really want to have a, a long term trade because it is Friday and I wanted to keep my position just until this evening. So I was waiting for the price to go down and then catch the, the price around here and then wait for the price to go higher more or less on this level here because I don't expect the price to close the, the trading week at uh, the highest point. So I was not expecting the price to go higher than this wing high but I was expecting the price to go let's say around 1.1445 that was also my uh, take profit but uh, the price started to go in a favorable direction you can see here this shadow indicates that the price went about 13 pips above uh, my uh, my entry point here but then started to go back again and uh, 
I closed my trade at the entry point because after this long uh, after this lower shadow I expected the price to continue to go higher because uh, what uh, we can see on this candle let me zoom in is that after pushing the price down sellers are not strong anymore that's why we have this lower shadow here so I was expecting buyers taking control of the market so after this lower shadow here I was expecting the price to go higher so as soon as I had this very nice movement of about 12 or 13 pips like in like five minutes I decided to move the stop loss at the entry point so I had a very small loss on the market like I think half pip plus the commission that I had to pay but um, anyway this was what I was trying to do on euro dollar with the non fund payrolls but it's not something that I suggest to do uh, let me also uh, have this okay um, uh, it's not something that uh, I I usually do but it is something that I usually do when I have a clear setup now on euro against US dollar we didn't really have a clear setup we have a, a green here just crossing the red one so we still need to wait for the orange one at least this on the 15 minutes chart if we are going to check even the hourly chart we uh, also have a bearish setup not a bullish setup setup so anyway you know that I don't really like to mix all the time frames so I was having a look at the 15 minutes chart because as I said it was not a trade that I was trying to carry for uh, more than one day for like uh, two three days it was just a trade that I was trying to get in the short period and uh, eventually close it uh, this evening so i was having a look at a lower time frame and here we didn't really have a clear setup but uh, what i usually do when we have the non-firm payrolls and we have a clear setup and i already have a position on it what i usually do let's say that around here so around one hour before uh, the, the non-firm payrolls I have already a long position on the market that is going well so what I usually do and of course we have a bullish setup this is not the case but just imagine that we have a bullish setup and I already have a long position on the market that is going well so what I usually do uh, when the non-firm payrolls is about to, to uh, be released is that I remove my position on the market so I start to take my profits then I wait for the candle of the non firm payrolls and then if the candle forms a lower shadow like this one I have the chance to reopen my trade at a better price now this candle here is not really a good example of non firm payrolls in my opinion because if you check other candles uh, if, if you check other candles like uh, last month or two months ago or usually the candle that you see during the non firm payrolls is almost always a kind of doji that has a very long upper shadow and a very long lower shadow so what I usually do is to wait for the, this shadow to uh, go at a price that is convenient for me to reopen my position in this case I had a long position that I closed around here I was waiting for a long lower shadow so I could take this price here reopen my position with a kind of discount let's say that I closed my position at 1.1450 I would have had a discount of about 35 pips so this is what I usually do when we have the non firm payrolls now I already understand that you might have a question do you usually trade uh, fundamentals like this so all the important data like this no I don't usually trade all the fundamentals like this uh, the non firm payrolls is the only one that I trade like this because it's not like the interest rate or uh, the GDP for example usually when you have something like that like an interest rate that is better than expected you uh, I think that I never saw something like better than expected and the price going down or well going against that currency uh, regarding the interest rate so usually when you have a better than expected interest rate for example for the US dollar 
you see the price of the US dollar increasing at least for for the first two free candles on uh, the 15 minutes chart you see a very big movement but for the non-farm payrolls it's not like that uh, it's not really like that and uh, usually you just see a very big action you you shouldn't even care about the number of the non-farm payrolls because usually uh, it's not about uh, what uh, what it says uh, for example if it is uh, a red it, the, the price should go higher because it means that it's negative for the US dollar so the currency per euro against US dollar should go higher should increase but uh, and if it is if it is green uh, the price should go down so you should see uh, the US dollar getting uh, strength against the, the euro and so the currency per euro against uh, US dollar should go down but usually what you see is nothing like that you only see volatility on the market that forms very very fast movements uh, for for the first 10 minutes more or less so I only trade the non-farm payrolls like this I don't trade all the fundamentals like this and uh, okay this was what I wanted to say about the non-farm payrolls and uh, uh, also another thing that I want I wanted to say is that uh, if you have uh, positions on the market with a small target uh, I would remove that uh, and uh, even if you don't want to reopen it uh, at a better price after the news I would remove my position on the market because uh uh, as I said, this uh, kind of news forms really, really uh, fast movements up and down. So you just risk on the market to have the price just hitting the stop loss before going again in a, a favorable direction. So I don't really like to keep my positions open during this kind of news. Okay. So uh, this is what I wanted to say about non-farm payrolls. I just want to show very quickly the... Uh, oh, I see that there are some messages. We'd like to look at uh, uh, SPY, if time allowed, daily SPY. Um, SPY, okay, I, d I don't know if you mean the stock or you, you mean something else. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, let me have a look at the software here. Okay, this is the MetaTrader. Uh, what I wanted to show you on the MetaTrader is, well, first of all, the account balance. I, I totally forgot that I wanted to show you the results. Let me put my my face behind here we go okay so uh regarding the swing trading technique it's been a very very good week for me i started to increase my risk because uh, of course i i'm trading with 500 dollars and uh, what i want to try to do is to increase my balance uh in, in well faster than uh, the way I increase my main account because with my main account I don't trade with $500 so I don't really feel like risking more than than 0.5% as I said in a previous video so usually I risk from 0.1 to 0.5% with this kind of account I feel that uh, I can also allow myself to risk like 2% of max on the market so I started to adopt this kind of risk management of course I don't suggest to do that and now I know that uh, you may think okay you don't suggest to do it but you do it okay this is something that uh, I don't suggest to do it of course but uh, why do I do that I do it mainly for two reasons the first one is that uh, I'm trading just with $500 and this is probably if if we uh, remove the accounts that I have on Oanda this is uh, my uh, my smallest uh, uh, account that I have in forex trading so if I really want to try to grow it faster I I think that I can accept a drawdown that is uh, that is higher than the usual drawdown that I would like to accept so I'm willing to risk 2% of max per each position and the second thing that I wanted to say is that uh, I 
I already think that I will try to prove how to grow a small account with the account that I have on DarwinX. So here I don't really feel like I need to prove anything like how to grow a small account, uh, keeping your risk low or something like that. I don't really feel that I need to prove something like that because I'm already doing with DarwinX. Um, so this account is totally different. I will just use this to analyze uh, the, the trades with the swing trading strategy that I explain in the Udemy course. And I will try to grow this, amount, this account uh, as soon as possible. Now, uh, it is kind of same that I have done with the Alm uh, account on Oanda because um, if you remember, I have doubled my account in four months, more or less. And I was also uh, recently in that case 1% of max but if you consider that the ALM uh, system is more or less more risky that than the swing trading account just because it opens more uh, more positions on the market so of course you can risk to have like nine ten bad trades in a row and I think it is a chance that is higher compared to the swing trading technique here I think I'm allowed to risk 2%. Another thing is that uh, I really trust myself. <laughs> I don't really want to sound uh, kind of arrogant or something like that. But when it comes to Forex trading, I really trust myself. This doesn't mean that I don't have any chance to lose my money. Of course, I have the chance to lose my money, especially if I have a risk that is high like this one, 2% of max. But uh, I, when I say I trust myself, I say that I trust my, my my mind more or less my emotions if I say if I see that I'm losing like 10 positions in a row with the 2% of max I have minus 20% on the market or even if I'm in a bad trading period and I am at minus 30% of the market when I say I trust myself it means that I know that I'm not going to make any kind of mistake like increasing the size of my positions or uh, op um, opening a revenge trade or over trading trying to uh, uh, t trying to open more positions on the market just to recover from my losses i'm not going to do anything like that of course i will have a bad period uh, I'm, I'm expecting to have a bad period hopefully not soon but uh, of course bad periods are parts of are part of the game so uh, when I will have a bad period I will just say to you in the live streaming I'm having a bad period my account is decreasing but we will do it better very soon and we will try to increase this amount over time in the long period so this is what I wanted to say uh, with I trust myself and this is the way I'm managing the risk with the swing trading account and you can see that right now I have 554 uh, dollars. Uh, so I started with uh, 503 dollars, I think. Let me check the account history. Uh, yeah, I think that, yeah, deposit is $503. So I'm having, I had for this week a profit of $51. So more or less, let's say 10% I had this week, which is very good. And um, I had a couple of good trades that contribute contributed to that. And I have analyzed them uh, on uh, on the video of uh, that I published on Wednesday. And uh, let me go back and I want to have my face again and I want to hide the MetaTrader. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the S&P, yeah, okay. So uh, the, the, the indices, uh, what <laughs> I was not sure if it was like a typo, you meant like a pound Japanese yen or if you if you really meant the, in, the index. Okay, uh, it's okay, but it's fine by me. And uh, what I, I was trying to say, uh, I, I totally forgot what I, okay, yeah. I, I, was, uh, I was going to analyze one of the, the trade that contributed to have this kind of performance this week. It is this one on Euro Australian dollar that I was analyzing uh, on Wednesday. And uh, I had a risk to reward ratio of one to 3.35. 
so risking 2% of max uh, I had uh, a return that is 7.70% on this uh, on this trade so uh, of course uh, when you uh, have a profit on a trade like this with this kind of risk to reward ratio everything is easier for the week so with just one trade I had a return of 7.70% which was amazing okay and um, okay I think that that's all for what I wanted to say regarding my uh, swing trading account and uh, there have been a couple of requests so far so the first one is pound against New Zealand dollar hourly chart and uh, uh, the second one is the S&P and uh, I don't really know uh, what time frame but I assume a long term uh, time frame uh, because uh, at least for the indices I trade long, long term I don't really trade uh, lower time frames uh, but uh, let's start from the first request so pound against the New Zealand dollar let me find it here okay here we go uh, hourly chart we have said okay I want to uh, hide everything here so even this line because what I was uh, saying is that uh, I want to start from the very beginning so without any kind of indicator without any kind of analysis on the chart I want to start from the very beginning so you can understand how I think when I try to uh, open a new position on the market okay meanwhile of course if you have another request just type it there in the chat and i see new zealand dollar japanese uh, yen four hour okay i'm going to analyze everything <laughs> and uh, first of all pound and new zealand dollar hourly chart so what i do at at first i zoom out and i try to have a look at the price in the long period so uh, probably here we have from uh, probably july yeah beginning of july to uh, the very first days of November so July August September October uh, we have four months and uh yeah we have four months <laughs> and uh, of course four months is good for me to check uh, the, the long period so in the long period we don't really have a clear trend I, I see in the in the first phase here we have a kind of range then the price starts to go up it has one major retracement here then goes up again and now clearly we are in a phase where uh, we are in a strong downtrend of the market so in the long term for the last four months I can't really uh, find any kind of uh, of uh, uh, trend on the market so it's not really helping to study the trend in the long period but it's helping to study the action in the long in the long period because I can clearly see that we have a very important level around here you can see okay let me draw it better uh, I don't know why it is green okay l let's leave it green you can see here we have a very important level this is not just a level of support and uh, resistance this is also a kind of average in the long period I believe in my opinion because uh, you can see that the price has been for a while below it and then for a while above it and now it's coming back to that level once again so I think that at the moment for the last four months probably this level let's say 1.95 to 1.97 I believe is probably the normal uh, the normal price uh, uh, the, the normal level for this price and so probably this price here is in a standard level is in a good level right now I don't think it's in any kind of overbought area or oversold area if you want to put it in terms of oscillators so this uh, level is uh, is a level that I'm going to keep and if we analyze the, um, the short term period so uh, this trend here this downtrend here of course this is a very very strong downtrend so uh, in this in this case I'm going to open only short positions I don't really need uh, the setup of the moving averages in this case to analyze the trend because it's very clear that here we are in a downtrend but I can still have my setup on the chart to uh, try to find other important levels that I want to analyze for example here I can see that this level that 
I was analyzing in the long period is also very close to two of the moving averages that I have on the market. The first one is the green one that is in the in that level right now. So this this also confirms my uh, theory about that level that this is a very important level that we should monitor on the market and it is also quite close to the orange moving average. So um, a short position on this currency pair, I think that it makes sense, it makes, because we are on a very important level, we had a first breakout here, then the price went once again on that level, and now it's a bit like gravitating around this level, so I think that here a short position makes sense if we analyze, uh, the, um, if we analyze the, the chart like this, but I also want to analyze the, the short term, the very short short term so analyze what the candlesticks are telling me so starting from here we have a reaction by sellers and the price is going clearly down we have four can four red candles in a row and uh, then the price is having uh, here a very strong reaction that pushes the price even below the green moving average then we have another reaction by buyers and then a reaction by sellers another small reaction by buyers and then we are more or less i don't think this is any kind of reaction right now i think it's just that it's the end of the week so the volatility is a bit down and we are not expecting to see any kind of strong movement so I expect now the price to uh, to close the trading week like this and then we can see what happens on Monday so at the moment I think that a short position makes sense but what I want to do is to study the action on Monday so I will probably wait for the Tokyo and the London session to uh, to check any candlestick that is confirming that sellers are reacting on this this level here. I already have a couple of confirmation with this down movement, this other down movement, but I think that it is wise to wait for another one, even if, uh, if we analyze only this part of the market, so only this, we can even say that it's not that there is a kind of uh, a descending triangle, but almost, I will say. So uh, even, even analyzing chart patterns, we have a we have a bearish situation so it's it's a kind of uh, descending triangle so here i will say that everything is pointing to to uh, the the bearish uh, direction of the market so to uh, have a short position on it now it's not easy to uh, analyze an entry point if we still don't have a candlestick that is confirming that there is a reaction by sellers. So the idea on this currency pair for, my, for next week, my trading idea is to wait for a reaction by sellers probably I want to have a strong reaction below this level here and then open a short position. But uh, if I have to open a, a, an indicator to try to study, uh, to try to study entry levels here, uh, probably on, in this kind of situation, uh, as I said many times, I think <laughs> an oscillator is not uh, ideal because we are in a very strong trend. So an oscillator is not going to do anything. Uh, also, uh, while I'm talking about indicators, I'm also noticing that we may also have a kind of pennant here. So probably I'm going to study both actions just because I don't really want to miss anything uh, here on the market. So we don't really have just a, a descending triangle. We also have a kind of pennant in this situation. But in any case, uh, everything is confirming what I'm saying so far that uh, in any case, we should wait for a strong action by sellers is confirming that sellers are there on the market are reacting on this level and are pushing the price down so in any case even if we want to if you want to analyze this descending triangle or if you want to analyze this pendant in any case i think that the best thing to do in uh, here in this situation is to wait for a confirmation that sellers are on the market so ideally we want to see at least a couple of strong bearish candles that are confirming that the price is going down. 
Regarding the indicators, I was saying uh, that uh, an oscillator is not ideal here because we have a strong trend. So what we can do uh, in a situation of strong trends, uh, uh, we may use two kind of indicators. The first one is the Ichimoku that I already have here. And uh, let me clear a bit here. So I cancel for a while this level and I cancel for a while the moving averages because uh, it's not very clear. So the, the uh, Ichimoku in this situation is not very clear and I kind of understand why. Uh, the reason is that uh after this strong up movement, we are going to towards the end of the week. So we have the price not having a, a, a huge movements like the ones before. You can see that comparing the movements here to the movements that we had throughout the whole week, this kind of movements are very, very weak. So the, the Ichimoku is saying that right now we are kind of in a kind of congestion phase and the trend is not clear anymore. So in this situation, the Ichimoku is not having helping me at all. So I can also just cancel it and I'm not going to use it. Another uh, indicator that I was mentioning before is the parabolic SAR and I'm going to find it. Let me have a look at the, the charts because I'm always kind of scared that I'm in the wrong uh, uh, the wrong uh, screen. But no, I see that <laughs> we are on the trading view. Okay, parabolic SAR strategy. Okay. And uh, let me adjust it because I really hate the style here and uh, I want the dots. Where's the oh, circles? Okay. And I don't mind about having a blue color. Blue color is fine by me. So the parabolic SAR is very useful, in my opinion, when you want to find out when was the price that you should wait for a breakout. So uh, it's very easy to use. Let's Let's uh, have some examples. Let's use it around here, for example. Now, the, the dots are below the price. So it means that in that particular phase of the market, the market is going up. And uh, if you want to wait for the market to go down again, you should wait for the price to hit the dot. And after hitting the dot here, you can see that the dots start to go in, in the upper part. So above the price and so a dot here means that if you want to wait for another up movement to confirm that the market is is having another up up movement or uptrend you need to wait for the price to break this level here so this is this is more or less how to use the parabolic SAR. I'm not really going uh, through the formula. I'm not really going to show any strategy. Just want to show how uh, in, in general it works. So here we have a breakout of this level that is shown by the parabolic SAR. So after breaking this level, we can confirm with this indicator that, that the market is bearish. And so it, it is about to go down and actually after breaking Breaking this dot here, you can see that the market is going down. Now here you can see the price breaking this dot here and we have a market that according to, to the parabolic SAR is bullish and it is going just slightly up. But if you want to consider this a retracement, for example, you have a short position on the market, so then you have a retracement and you see, okay, I'm going to remove my position for a while because I want to wait for the retracement on the market and then I open it again in a second period. So you can use the parabolic SAR as well. You can see that you need to wait for the breakout of one of these dots and the breakout happens here after this candle here. So after this candle, the, the parabolic SAR confirms that the downtrend may resume. So this is the end of the retracement and the, and, uh, the downtrend that was on the market is resuming. So this is more or less how to use the parabolic SAR. So we have tried here with uh, price action, but we don't really have any strong candle that is confirming that we are ready to open a short position on the market. So we will probably need to wait on Monday. We uh, also tried with the uh, Ichimoku indicator, but you have seen that it's not very clear in this kind of situation where the price is just going 
up and down. I don't really want to open the oscillator because uh, in the long term we have seen we have a super strong downtrend so it's not going to help. The parabolic SAR is probably uh, the one that you want to use in this case to confirm a breakout and you can see that the dot is here around 1.9457 probably the dot is going to increase during uh, the period until Monday afternoon so I think that uh, uh, according to the parabolic SAR you may want to open a short position around let's say 1.9475 so at least you need to wait for a breakout of this this price here. Um, honestly, I think that uh, I'm going to uh, monitor this currency pair because I'm also interested in opening a position on it but honestly I think I'm not going uh, to trade the parabolic SAR in this case because I think that this level here is a bit a bit too close to the current price so I think that I will wait not only for this breakout here but I will wait for a breakout of also these lows that are at the bottom here so I will wait for uh, a, um, a, a better down movement to open my position and of course I will um, monitor the candlesticks on Monday morning during the Tokyo session and the London session. Okay, so this, uh, let me uh, close the parabolic SAR. Okay, so this is more or less what I think when I need to open a new position on the market and it makes me laugh because you may think now so you spend 20 minutes every time you need to analyze a single currency pair no I don't really spend 20 minutes now I was talking and showing you uh, my, my process my thinking process so of course it took time for me to explain everything and uh, also try to find the chart patterns the levels in the long period but of course when I open the, the chart uh, with um, with my uh, other trading account or even here on a trading view uh, or on the meta trader it's not that every time I analyze the market and then I cancel everything I already have the levels on the chart I already have the chart patterns on the chart I already have the indicator that uh, I know that may be useful for that kind of uh, chart so of course uh, it's not that I'm going to do all over again uh, everything and to just try to spot the the key levels on the that chart uh, i do it like that every time here because i think it is kind of educational to to uh, have every time uh, um, the key levels just drawing the key levels on the chart adding the indicators or drawing chart patterns uh, of course it wouldn't be super educational or super inst super instructive instructive for you if I already have everything on the chart and I don't need to open anything I don't need to draw any line and just say okay this is my analysis so I'm going to open a short position I don't think it is is uh, what you want to see so I'm not taking 20 minutes every time when I need to have make a decision on the Forex market but uh, this is the way I think so I analyze different uh, different scenarios different situations okay so I really took time to analyze pound New Zealand dollar and uh, I uh, lost a bit the the chat okay um, so uh, still the S&P okay then the New Zealand dollar Japanese yen for our chart uh, Harris uh, hello uh, it says parabolic okay the parabolic SAR that I have used um, I have uh, never seen the parabolic SAR uh, interesting yeah it is quite interesting uh, I mean I use different indicators and um, uh, the the ones that I usually share in my uh, Udemy courses are the ones that are good alone to form a strategy and uh, and the parabolic SAR I don't think is good alone by itself to form a uh, a strategy a, a complete strategy that's why I have uh, I haven't shared yet the parabolic SAR with you but uh, I don't know maybe for the new year I can make a new course 
with all the other indicators that I use that are not forming a complete strategy, that, but that may be helpful uh, if you want to analyze uh, the market. So I don't know, like uh, the parabolic SAR uh, or the market profile or other kind of indicators, just like one section for any indicator, starting from the formula, having a very deep look at it. And I don't know, it's just an idea, but at the moment I really want to have a break from Udemy because I just want to focus on my trading and uh, and also the work that we are doing together on different platforms so at the moment I'm not going to work on any other course on Udemy uh, but maybe for the new year if you're interested I can do something like that and um, I have seen comparing to the forward chart for our chart, uh, for our chart, of course, we still have a short-term uh, downtrend that is very, very uh, strong. But I can also see that in the long period we have a kind of uptrend uh, here, with the price starting uh, from 1.75 more or less going over two so we have a kind of uptrend and this may also be the beginning of a long-term downtrend but um, overall I can see that what I was saying is confirmed and it is that there is a kind of average starting from um, let me draw a uh, okay a vertical line that if we open the market profile but uh, I have seen that here is not the same that uh, of the one that I have on the MetaTrader so I'm not going to open it if we uh, analyze the market here you can see that from this point going on we have the price that is really on in around 1.95 and 1.97 if we check the average of all these prices so I will talk about a new downtrend, long-term downtrend, uh, but uh, I, I also wouldn't be too positive about that because you may see the price once again going down, maybe stopping around here and coming back to the original level, the normal level that I think is around 1.95, 1.97. So I wouldn't place my take profit below 1.90 uh, to be honest. Okay. Uh, so, uh, very helpful, okay, thank you uh, very much, Matthew, and Ibrahim says, what do you think about the MACD or RSI? Uh, the RSI is uh, one that I have briefly analyzed in my uh, course regarding candle signals. I dedicated, I think, three lectures to it, uh, and uh, I think it is okay, uh, it is okay, the RSI, but uh, of course you need to, uh, as uh, all the other indicators, you really need to understand how to apply it. Uh, for example, I was talking about oscillators that you should apply in uh, a range, not in a trending market, but for the RSI, for example, I uh, think it was the RSI, I'm not really sure. Uh, I also dedicated a video uh, talking about uh, how to apply the RSI to uh, the highs, the closing price, the, the lows, and the opening price and uh, also uh, it is a very important difference in my opinion uh, usually traders just apply to uh, the close so closing prices but I think it is a very important uh, difference and I talk about it uh, in the course I'm not really sure right now if it was the RSI I'm going to double check later uh, but in any case uh, it is the same logic so I really think that uh, if you apply it uh, in uh, in a way that you also understand it, I think it is very good. So regarding the MACD, I really have uh, nothing to say about it. It's one of the most popular indicators out there. So of course, it is a good one in my opinion. I, I have a strategy that also includes the MACD. Uh, it's not only about the MACD, but also includes the MACD. Uh, but uh, honestly, uh, it's just because... It, it is a kind of algorithm, it's not about analyzing the, the market. When it comes to analyzing the market, I don't particularly like the, the MACD, I mean it's not that I don't like it, is that for my personal trading style I don't think it's 
is adding something useful to me but of course it may be different for another trader it may be that the macd is the most important indicator for another trading style but for uh, the the style that i have the macd i found out that is not really adding anything to my trading uh, can you have a look at uh, Australian dollar pound one hour please okay I really need to go through all of them <laughs> and Lindsay say what I mean uh, can it be a part of your analysis to go down to lower time frames or should you stay on one time frame uh, no I, I uh, honestly uh, like to trade only one time frame because uh, targets uh, may be very different if you analyze uh, for example daily four hour chart and one hour chart uh, it is good if you try to uh, to to um, see if the direction of the market is the same so uh, for example just to mention Dow and its theories uh, uh, regarding the trend you have a three kind of trends the major one the minor one and the very short term trend so uh, if you want to analyze all of them okay you can analyze daily uh, four hour and one hour charts but uh, in my opinion since you have very different targets uh, you may have have uh, 30 pips on the hourly chart you may have a target of 100 pips on the four hour and so you may have a target of 250 pips on the daily in my opinion it doesn't make sense to mix all of them and then just decide to trade with a target on just one of them so if i trade the if i'm trading the one hour chart i would like to stick to my one hour charts and without analyzing other time frames even if you have a long term trend that is uh, that is going up but uh, you have a short term trend that is going down and you are trading the 15 minutes chart of course you are going to look for short positions because it doesn't make sense to have a long position according to the the long term trend that uh, uh, probably should have targets of two 300 pips but you are trading the 15 minutes chart with a target of 15 pips for example in my opinion it doesn't make sense to analyze all the time frames having said that uh, let me try to find the SMP I have the watch list here okay <laughs> I'm not really familiar uh, S&P okay. that the price was just going up we had very very small retracements a major one is this one another one is this one another one is this one but then until here until almost 2900 we didn't really have any kind of major retracements so, so uh, a good strategy with ind indices was just to buy and hold like I really don't like this strategy buy and hold because it really um, it really makes me believe that you don't really need to have a strategy for your exit points and you don't really need to calculate the risk because the price sooner or later is going up again so I don't really like the hold and uh, the buy and hold but uh, in the, for indices for a very long time for many years it's really been like that because the price was just going up and up higher and higher but right now I, I mm, see that many traders are kind of scared because uh, if we analyze the trend from the beginning of two 2018 uh, you can see that uh, the price is not clearly in an uptrend I mean we have had a major retracement here the price was going up again another major retracement here with the price that seemed to resume the long-term downtrend uh, uptrend and then we have another strong uh, retracements uh, here we are talking about very important retracements if we consider that for years we have had uh, uh, like three of these retracements in like seven years six seven years and now in just one year we have had the other three of these retracements so I, I know that people are kind of scared about it so honestly what I think uh, about the S&P is that uh, it is still a good idea to buy it uh, uh, even for a uh, I mean for uh, for the long term and even for the short period I think it is a good idea to buy this index and uh, of course if you want to uh, analyze the, the charts I don't really like to analyze I mean I like to analyze candlesticks here 
there but uh, during this period especially you can see uh, many important gaps so I, I really would like to skip the candlestick analysis for the last period of the S&P because there are very very important gaps that uh, are not uh, uh, allowing us to uh, to uh, anal analyze a chart uh, candlestick patterns that we are familiar with but uh, if we uh, open for example well the Ichiboku in this case uh, I'm I'm quite sure that uh, it is not very <laughs> Uh, comfortable for our position is loading okay the Ichimoku is showing that the price is going down so uh, probably um, I wouldn't I wouldn't do anything at the moment because the Ichimoku really is very good to spot new trends so if, even if I believe that this is a retracement, I wouldn't risk that this is not just a retracement and you will find yourself in a very strong downtrend with a long position, especially if you are planning uh, to to uh, have a strategy like uh, buy and hold, which is quite common for indices. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for it, to be honest, uh, and uh, I, I will wait. I will wait for a confirmation that the price is going higher and um, 2000 700 I don't think is a very good uh, price to buy of course <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it, it sounds a kind of contradiction because when I say 2700 is not a good price to buy but I will buy around 2800 so you may think why are you buying at a price that is more expensive than the price that you say that is not very good the reason is simply that I'm waiting for a com confirmation that this, this is just a retracement that it is not a new uh, downtrend so so of course I want to have a confirmation that the price is going up, that the buyers are still strong on the market. So at, at the moment I would keep my bullish outlook because for indices I always have a bullish outlook, but I wouldn't risk to open my long position right now. Another thing is if you really want to uh, try to hit the jackpot so if you really want to trade with a an amazing risk to reward ratio you may really try to consider uh, to have a short position on the market here it's something that i usually don't do with indices i think that more than 95 percent of my positions with indices are long positions but if you uh, really want to go against the trend in this case i'm not talking about the trend of the market but the trend of traders that they usually are just buying indices if you really want to try to hit the jackpot that uh, ideally you also have fundamental uh, reasons to to open a short position i really think that this might also be one of those scenarios where everything everyone is buying but it may also happen that the market crashes and go down and you may see the price even reaching a uh, uh, around 2500 level well no i don't expect this this year but probably by the beginning of the new year if this downtrend is confirmed and uh, regarding the setup of the moving averages of course here i don't really expect to have a, a short uh, uh, setup because the moving averages for indices are almost always uh, in an uptrend so you can see that they are in an uptrend since the middle of 2016 so I don't expect to have the setup uh, that uh, is, is bearish but you can see that we have a first signal with the, the green moving average going down so for the first time if this downtrend continues well not downtrend but this strong retracement continues for the first time since 2016 we may have a situation that is not very clear with the setup that is not bullish any more. So this is my point of view uh, regarding the S&P. I see Chess Pirate joining here with the sunglasses. <laughs> okay, hi Chess Pirate. And then there are other two uh, requests: New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen for hour, and uh, the other one. I think I lost it. <laughs> uh, where's the other one? Uh, 
Uh, oh, Australian dollar pound uh, on one hour chart. If you don't mind, I'm taking more time today. Uh, if you want to leave, uh, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I think that I'm taking like 10 minutes more because I would like to analyze the other currency pairs because I already promised <laughs> that. So, so uh, I, I would like to, uh, to go uh, through it. Uh, and uh, so let me go back to my Forex list. And uh, I keep forgetting which one was the first one. <laughs> okay, New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen was the first one. And I have it here, and I think that it was a four hour. Let me check back. Four hour. Yeah, four hour. Okay. Uh, here we have a very, very interesting currency pair. And uh, I have to say that if we analyze the trend since, let's say, the let's say August, because from here to here we are from August to the beginning of November. I think that we are in a kind of range. And I'm going to draw another line here at the top. So I think that here we have a kind of range. And when we have a range like this, we have already seen in the course regarding the swing trading and even several times when I analyze the, the market that the setup of the moving average is, uh, is not very useful in this kind of situations. And you can see that the, the green moving average is going up, down, and now is about to go up again and is crossing the other moving averages, in this case the, the orange one, several times. So of course even if here we have a bearish set up, I wouldn't really rely on it because uh, it's not very clear in my opinion and uh, also I don't really um, uh, want to uh, open a short position right now on the market because something is that something is having a range, something is having a range like this. This is a very strong range because you can see that the price goes from one side to the other side very, very fast. So this suggests that really buyers are are buying here and sellers are selling here because you may you can see that as soon as the price reaches this level the price just skyrockets here going high very very fast we are seeing a very strong movement and the same here very strong movement and even here on the market super strong movement from here to here and it is the same thing for sellers from here to here from the top to the bottom here so this is a very strong uh, range uh, and uh, of course now we are at the top of this range and as I said before when we analyze the ranges a good idea would be uh, to open a, an oscillator instead of the moving averages and I think that even if we try to open the Ichimoku here if you have studied the course you may already imagine that you can't understand a single thing about the charts of course because as I said in the course and as I repeat now the Ichimoku is not very good to analyze uh, uh, ranging markets. I have a lecture in, in the course that is called uh, I think trending markets versus congestion phases and uh, it shows a chart that is very similar to this one where you can't uh, see anything with the Ichimoku because uh, it's just covering the price so the Ichimoku is not very clear uh, when we have uh, a, a range like this so in this case we may really want to try to open an oscillator I'm going for the stochastic for example uh, oh, I have the pro plan, so it's, it allows me to have five indicators on the chart. So I'm going to delete the, uh, the parabolic SAR and I'm going to have the stochastic. So the stochastic here says that uh, it is a good opportunity to sell. And um, of course not here. And uh, why I say not here? Because we are analyzing this range. So we want to have, we want to sell when the stochastic is in overbought, but of course we want to sell when it is in an overbought area, but also at the top of the range. So of course this is not a signal for the stochastic, but this is a signal. Signal. Once again, this really highlights the, the skills of traders to analyze the markets with the indicators because if you just apply the normal 
setup of the stochastic oscillator you just sell at uh, sell at the top and buy at the bottom but of course you are not going to sell here if you really understand the market and if you really understand the oscillator you are going to sell here at the top of not here when the price is in the middle of the range it doesn't make any sense but right now we have a rejection uh, well not really a rejection because we have just a single candle that is quite uh, uh, strong all the others are just not very strong well probably this one is also uh, quite good because it shows that buyers attempted to go uh, to push the price higher once again but sellers reacted and we have a uh, candlestick that it's almost a doji but with a very long upper shadow so this is a good signal but uh, uh, of course this uh, here we have a good situation because we are at the top of the range the stochastic that is coming from an overbought area and is going down so here we have a favorable situation to open a trade even if I want to remove the stochastic and just analyze the, the trade in terms of uh, risk to reward opportunity that we have here we have an amazing uh, trade because we can structure two different trades here here so short position even right now on the market with a stop loss that is just above this level here so let's consider something like 75.80 you may structure a first position at the I think that it makes sense to have a uh, take profit that is in the middle of this uh, range so something like here let's say 74.10 around here you don't really have a great risk to reward ratio but this is just half of your position so I will start to take my profits here in the middle of the range and then of course having a second take profit that is at the bottom in this case you can see that you really would have an amazing risk to reward ratio that is is one to four so I believe that this is a, a very good opportunity on the market and uh, I will go for it so I think that this is another one that you should consider to open for the next week and um, the one says thanks okay no problem for that and I think that, uh, well, uh, uh, honestly, I have analyzed <laughs> the, the currency pair, as, uh, as I said at the beginning of the video, with just the, um, uh, the, the thinking process that uh, I have when I try to analyze and open a position with my main account. So, of course, I consider the swing trading strategy, especially when we have a trend and not a range. Of course, I also consider the Ichimoku, and uh, you can see everything in the in the Udemy courses and I know that Matthew that you have uh, you have asked me for New Zealand dollar Japanese yen you have taken probably all of my courses on Udemy but if not all uh, many of them and uh, of course you can apply those strategies but here I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to show how I think when I analyze and uh, open a trade with my main account considering uh, several things. Um, Ichimoku seems good to confirm a range. Well, okay, I think that when you see that the Ichimoku is so messy, uh, I think that, yeah, you confirm that there's a range. Uh, no, except for that, except for that, uh, I, I don't know, probably you mean uh, regarding the breakout of the clouds. Uh, uh, Probably, yeah, you may uh, try also something like that. And uh, last one was, uh, which one? Uh, Australian dollar pound uh, on uh, one hour charts. So one hour, Australian dollar pound. Okay, here we go. Uh, was it? Australian dollar pound, one hour, yes. Uh, okay, so of course here I have pound against Australian dollar. So everything that I say, just do the opposite. If I say that there is a downtrend, if you have on your uh, on your platform Australian dollar pound, of course it's just the opposite. So if I say that there is a downtrend, just just think that there is an uptrend in your uh, trading platform. Usually um, uh, brokers just quote the price of pound against Australian dollar, but it might also be that. That there are some brokers quoting Australian dollar against uh, a pound. It's just the opposite. You just need to divide uh, one uh, by this price, 1.80, and you get the price of Australian dollar pounds. Anyway, uh, let's talk about uh, analysis here because that's what we are doing. <laughs> and uh, okay, um, pound against Australian dollar. 
I believe that uh, was in a good uh, uptrend uh, starting from uh, August, so beginning of August until we can say almost middle of October. But uh, now it's clear that the price is going down, so we are facing a short term downtrend. If we analyze uh, uh, important levels, I can see another level that is a kind of uh, a kind of important level like the one that we have analyzed before and uh, so we have this level here uh, well it is also understandable because uh, pound uh, against Australian dollar pound against New Zealand dollar have a very uh, high correlation positive correlation so when one is moving up the other one is usually moving up as well and uh, okay so we have this kind of strong level here and we have the price that right now is in that level so not very clear what to do here and uh, if we analyze uh, um, the chart patterns I think that is very similar to the other one. We have uh, another level here at the bottom. So I'm also going to delete this because it's pretty much explained by this level. We have a downtrend line. I'm not going to uh, consider all the, the um, lower highs so here. I'm going to start from this because I think pretty much explains the action of the market. Okay, and uh, also we have a kind of uptrend line that we should consider. It's not confirmed because we only have a couple of touches on it, but I think that it is wise to consider this kind of uh, uptrend line as well. So you can see that right now you may want to open a short positions and uh, if we open the, the moving averages you see that you have a bearish setup here on the hourly chart. So even without checking <laughs> the moving averages I already knew that uh, here is a favorable situation to open a short position because it's quite clear that the short term trend is going down and it's going down quite fast uh, so here of course you want to consider a short position and I'm not even going to open the Ichimoku because I already know that it's a bit messy and actually it is a bit messy here because we are having a kind of just small retracement and range here and uh, here what I want to do is more or less the same that I want to do on pound New Zealand dollar right don't really trust uh, a trade right now here uh, you may also try a uh, rejection to apply the concept of rejection because uh, of course pound against Australian dollar is uh, a, a currency pair that has very strong movements so from here to uh, the bottom even the bottom of this uptrend line we are talking about uh, already 60 pips uh, even more than that 70 pips so of uh, you can also consider to apply the concept of rejection and uh, try a position as soon as possible on this level but at the moment you don't really have any kind of signal. The first one has been here with this uh, uh, shooting star and probably it was uh, you should wait for at least a couple of, of bearish candles that confirm that the price is going down so I will wait for at least a couple of candles like this too for example put here on this downtrend line a very strong signal that confirm that the price is going down so you ideally want to wait for a couple of candles like this on the downtrend line confirming the price to go down but at that point you are about 30 pips far from a potential breakout so at that point I will wait for a breakout as well and if you have a breakout you have a double breakout a breakout of a potential uptrend line and a breakout of this level here so once again I think that the best thing to do here is to wait for the price to go down break this level here and place your stop entry order right below probably 1.7920 is a good level otherwise if you want to try to hit the jackpot to trade the rejection here at the top you will have for sure a great risk to reward ratio this is for sure better of course than trading the breakout but you will not have any kind of confirmation so if the price doesn't go down you have a loss on the market if the price goes up 
So if you wait for the breakouts and the price goes up, you don't have any kind of loss because you don't have your position on the market. You haven't opened your position yet. So this is my uh, analysis regarding pound Australian dollar. Just out of curiosity, uh, because I see that um, <coughs> you liked the parabolic as a parabolic as a okay. <coughs> Uh, just out of curiosity, we can also check a uh, potential breakout with the dots of the parabolic SAR. <clears throat> mm, let me check it. Oh, I need to set it again. What happens here? <laughs> okay, uh, let me have the circles. You can see that with the parabolic SAR, you more or less have the same confirmation of a, a downtrend. So you really need to wait for this level, for a breakout around this level to confirm that you can open a short position, in my opinion. And as you can see, trading with the price action, trading with key levels and even adding an indicators, we still have the same situation on the market. So uh, more or less, they are saying the same things that is not good chance to open your trade now but you should wait for this level to be broken okay so this was my analysis let me let me see the chat uh, yes it was because it was so messy <laughs> okay yeah i was i was feeling something like that so i i i was just guessing that was uh, because of that okay i think i took about 15 20 minutes more today i hope that it was not annoying it's always a pleasure to have your company while analyzing the market i really enjoy having you here keeping me company while i talk and i analyze the markets is uh, is always nice i i really mean it and uh, okay i see that the there's no further request, so I'm going to end my live streaming now and I'm going to play chess with Chess Pirate, a friend of mine. <laughs> so we already planned to play chess together for the evening and I hope that you have better plans than me and <laughs> I hope that you will enjoy the weekend as well. I will see you uh, on uh, Sunday. I'm going to uh, have the book review, a very interesting book that uh, I didn't know before. I had a comment on YouTube on one of my videos, so I'm going to review that that book that a trader asked me to uh, review and a very interesting book I just finished it yesterday so I'm just trying to uh, clarify uh, to clear my mind to clear my um, what I want to say about the book and uh, okay so I wish you a great uh, weekend and I'll see you on Sunday bye everyone and thank you very much <clears throat>